Hi Aquarius, Rosemary from Rosemary Astrology and welcome to your January 2023 Astrology. Happy New Year. So the interesting thing this month to me is um, the Sun and Mercury in your 12th house and where Pluto has been sitting for ooh, about 18 years. You know, this is your inner self, right? It's where you go to get quiet, to look inwards. It is everything to do with prayer, meditation, therapy, tarot. It is all those tools we use or techniques to see beyond the veil or to look inwards for answers. You know, things that aren't necessarily factual or don't sometimes even make sense on the physical plane, but just where we know what's right. And, you know, it's really has to do with, you know, our, our intuition or the collective unconscious. It's our soul, our higher self, our astral body. You, know, you can call it what you want. But Pluto's um, trek, long trek through your 12th house has brought a lot of transformation probably in that aspect. And, you know, Pluto, we say, rules death and rebirth, also power and control issues. So, you know, perhaps you have been questioning yourself in terms of, you know, who, what do you believe? Do you, do you believe what you believe or do you believe what someone else has told you to believe? Or do you have certain... Um, ingrained or given prejudices with certain practices, you know, or certain thoughts about certain practices because you've been taught to believe that that's sort of a control factor, but you know, that's the power perhaps, and we all carry things like that. It's not just you Aquarius, but you know, that's the power of others have over us, right? They give us or lend us or, you know, ingrain their beliefs within us. So, you know, their ideas. So, you know, You've probably been thinking a lot about that. And just know that, you know, with the sun there and Mercury there, now retrograde, but going direct on the 18th and um, coming out of shadow on the 7th of February, you know, you are thinking a lot about that um, during the retrograde, reviewing that a lot. You know, Mercury is a lot of thought, you know, um, ideas, communication as well. Maybe you are speaking to a therapist or maybe... Um, you are speaking to someone about these, you know, practices or what works for you or that, you know, it's also the whole woo, right? That, that whole world of woo. And, you know, I speak from personal experience. It's not something you want to discuss with everybody because you quickly get seen as being weird depending on where, you know, where the other person is in their personal journey in terms of 12th house matters. But, you know, you could be communicating about that. Or, you know, perhaps it is just going online and doing a lot of research into different things. And the sun is going to bring focus there. And I think this is like one final review that you are doing because by this time next year, and I was just saying this in the Capricorn video, by this time next year, Pluto will have moved into your sign in your first house. And that will be a whole other story. But Pluto is at the very, very last degrees of your 12th house. So, you know, this is completing a very long cycle that has never happened before and will never happen again because it takes Pluto so long to go around the sun. It will happen again. We just won't, you know, be here, at least not in this lifetime to see it. So, you know, if you feel the need to get quiet in the new year um, and to really reflect and ponder, well, that's probably why and, and do honor that process because then on the 21st, of course, the sun is going to move into your sign and it will be the start of your year. So in a way, you're also preparing your new year, which will start on the 21st. Now, before the sun gets there, Venus will move into your sign on the 2nd and then move into Pisces on the 26th. Venus isn't super comfortable in your sign. You're, you're an air sign. You're very much of the mind. Um, you're very concerned with um, groups, we, you know, with fairness for everybody. Most Aquarians are, um, you know, don't just think of themselves or actually don't think of themselves and worry about what's going on with everybody else or how something is impacting everyone as a whole. And Venus is more of a one-on-one, -on -one, you know, warm, wants to uh, enter into relation with others. But regardless of this, Venus is going to lend her wonder wonderful uh, diplomatic uh, cooperative energy to your first house. So you're going to be very appealing to others. Um, romance is possible. People are going to want to work with you, cooperate with you. You know, you will have ease getting people on board and getting help with whatever it is you want to do. 
And of course, Venus is going to conjunct Saturn from the 21st to the 25th. Now, Saturn is your traditional ruler and Saturn has been in your sign for almost three years. Saturn is also going to move into Pisces in March. The same way uh, Pluto is going to take a little dip into your sign in your first house in 2023 move back into Capricorn and then of course move into your first house in 2024. So when these two are conjunct towards the end of the month, as I said, from the 21st to the 25th, but of course, you know, that energy doesn't flick on like a light switch and flick off. So it'll build. This is actually a really nice combination. You know, Venus relates to love, to beauty, also to money. Saturn, as you know, wants us to get structured, uh, wants responsibility, wants discipline. Saturn has been probably pushing you a lot to you know, structure who you are. The first house is, you know, our persona, our individuality. It's even our online persona, our physical appearance. Saturn really wants you to get clear on that, you know, and maybe you've been working hard to uh, forge your personality. And I don't want to make it sound like you didn't have one before, but there's a, um, there's a power with Saturn that really wants us to be clear and strong and structured and wants us to have boundaries. So, and this helps us move through the world with much more ease because we really know what we're about as opposed to, and you know, we've all done this um, Aquarius, obviously you know, I can think of several situations, but you know where we wind up in a situation we don't want to be in, or we do something we don't really want to do, or we're sort of cast in a role that, you know, we, in a situation we you know, in want no pardon or we don't want to be in that role. Saturn has really helped you redefine that and hopefully, you know, prevent that in the future. If when we give out strong energy of who we are and where our limits are, chances are people encroach a little less. Um, and I could talk forever on boundaries, but I won't. But just know, you know, with Venus there, a uh, conjunct Saturn, you know, this is going to bring another, um, you know, cycle of Saturn or trigger Saturn's energy again before he changes signs of really looking at, you know, that, that structure and um, limitations and discipline in terms of self. And Venus, you know, does it in a very caring way, can also have you doing it with the help of others, anything in relationship with others. If there's something, you know, that has to be defined. That is a wonderful time to do it. It'll all relate to self, of course. And this is just, you know, a really good energy to, to have there. Can it make you more attractive and be, um, you know, initiate a romance? Definitely. With Venus in your sign, of course, you're more charismatic. But Venus, as I said, takes on the tint of the sign she is in and, you know, the planets she is close to. So, this is, um, you know, a Venus that is her sweet, kind self, but that has structure and knows where she's going. And of course, any relationship, you know, including romantic relationships struck up during that period, you have more structure and you quickly want to know where things are going, especially in terms of a romance. By the 26th, though, she will have left your sign and she will be in your second house of finances. Neptune has been there for a long time and is the modern ruler of Pisces. So you might be getting the feeling or have had the feeling for a while that things aren't clear with um, finances or with your wealth. How do you define your wealth? I've done a whole video on Neptune through the signs and through the houses. And Neptune has a lot to do with compassion and blurring of boundaries, all the opposite of Saturn we were talking about. So, you know, perhaps you have been giving away your wealth. Perhaps it's been too much of your wealth because Neptune is always pushing us to think of others and to be compassionate. And as I said, not seeing really a limit between, you know, what's ours and what's theirs. With Venus there, and Venus won't be conjunct uh, Neptune until next month, Venus, of course, is exalted in Pisces. So this can be favorable for making money. Um, Venus is a planet that relates to wealth. She is the ruling planet of Taurus that is related to the second house. So perhaps, you know, that blur with money, you know, it can almost be also sometimes you felt money has just slipped through your hands and where is it gone? Venus blurs and Venus, had, uh, Venus, sorry, Neptune blurs and has a dreamlike quality. So maybe it's like, you know, money's almost disappearing <laughs> type of thing, you know. So, you know, Venus will help you perhaps increase your wealth, 
or um, you know just bring a windfall maybe there's an intuitive uh, quality to Pisces and especially with Neptune there so perhaps you are simply going to have out of the blue certain money making ideas and of course that's really wonderful any um, romance that struck up with Venus's time in Pisces has a dreamy quality to it so we're very much you know of the the dream world, the intuitive world. And I won't talk about the conjunction with Neptune, but that just, just adds to the dreamy quality. But that won't be until February. Now, briefly, Jupiter is direct in your third house. So that's short trips, uh, day trips, you know, usually places we can drive to in a car, we can getaways. It is our communications, online communications, you know, written, spoken. Uh, also, you know, it relates to Mercury and Gemini. So a lot of you know, thought process. It's also kin, siblings, you know, just our local jaunts around town to go to school. With Jupiter there, there's a lot of beneficial energy. And Jupiter was there part of 2022, went retrograde back into Pisces, is now back in Aries since December and will be there until mid-May. So, you know, if you are looking for a solution, if you are looking for opportunity, Jupiter will certainly bring it to you and you won't have to look that hard. Jupiter is also, you know, wisdom and philosophy. So if, um, you know, you work on this just a little bit, you know, Jupiter not only rewards us with opportunities and solutions that, you know, almost seem to fall out of the sky, but will also give us wisdom in these matters. So perhaps, you know, in terms of siblings or in terms of communications, you're just going to grow and have a more, um, wise approach, if I can say it like that, to these subjects. But do use this energy because this, of course, is just once every 12 years and then Jupiter will move into Taurus for another 12-year cycle. Good news, Mars has gone direct or will go direct on the 12th of January. will take time to pick up speed again. But remember, the fifth house is everything to do with children, creative pursuits, pleasure pursuits, romance. Maybe something that started there slowed down and Mars was retrograde for a few months. You know, I remember I said in the past videos, you felt like you're hitting a wall. Things aren't going anywhere. Um, Mars retrograde can be a very frustrated energy because Mars is a lot of energy, but now was moving backwards and feeling stuck. And I said, this is the time to just reevaluate and be ready when uh, Mars goes ahead again. This is the time. And if you do have pursuits in fifth house matters, do use this energy because by the end of March, Mars will move into Cancer in your sixth house. And finally, just before I go, Saturn and Neptune, Saturn, again, traditional ruler of your sign, Neptune, modern ruler of Pisces. Um, these two are going to be in a loose semi-sextile all month. A semi-sextile, or not that loose, actually, they are going to be in semi-sextile all month. And um, it's usually not an aspect I pay attention to. I'm just putting this on your radar because it lasts for the whole month. And... Of course, both planets are direct. So, you know, this is no boundaries. This is boundaries. This is, uh, you know, we're all one Pisces vibe. This is, uh, you know, very definite limits of who did what, who has what, and who is who. And you might feel a chafing back and forth. As I said, Neptune has a dissolving quality and might have been affecting your finances the last several years. This, these planets that spend a long time in each sign, you know, this happens in cycles. And um, this might be, you know, this is a, um, an aspect of discomfort. So, you know, there's a discomfort between who you are and what's happening with your finances. And, you know, of course, right, our, we want to say money isn't important, but it is. <laughs> And, you know, how our finances are going can affect, you know, who we are. You know, this is also a question of, you know, perhaps how much your wealth is related to your self-esteem or your self-confidence. And, you know, if it's blurring, if it's going in and out, if it's seeming to almost disappear, um, this can be affecting who you feel uh, you are or how this plays off of how you come off to others or appear to others. So just know you might be feeling that aspect of discomfort. As I said, not something major, but it just lasts all month. So I wanted to put that on your radar. But with Venus's wonderful presence, and as I said, Venus is related to material wealth. She is the ruling planet of Taurus. This could help, um, you know, put a more positive spin perhaps on what Neptune has been doing. And like I said, this is always in cycles, right? These planets aren't, who have long transits, aren't constantly, constantly 
you know, hitting us with this influence because it, it would be really hard regardless of, of the planet. And I'm talking about planets like, um, you know, Uranus, Pluto, Neptune that spend a really long time in each sign. But, you know, Venus will bring, of course, some beneficial, um, you know, her, her loving energy there and her propensity for making money. And just know there is a full moon on the 6th in Cancer, of course. This is physical health. This is uh, psychological and mental health. This is your work, your duties to others. This is your inner world and your responsibility to self. The sun will, of course, still be there at the start of the month. So, you know, the full moon highlights something. This is your workload, your workplace, your co-workers. It can be your academic career. It can be unpaid work you do if you're not in paid employment, just your duties and responsibilities to others. The full moon will highlight something there. And of course, there's an opposition between the sun bringing light to your 12th house. So maybe, you know, you'll be searching for a balance or you'll be getting insight into a balance between you know workload and uh, personal time or me time or self-care time so Aquarius that is everything I wanted to tell you have a wonderful month of January don't forget to like if you liked subscribe thank you for all your subscribes your likes your comments I read every single one of them I love bringing the astrology to you every month take care and I will see you next month love you Aquarius bye